because it's more than worship on a Sunday morning. If there's real Pentecost in the house, then the folk ought to be changed in the house. You can praise and make a whole lot of noise, and some folk come in church, and they leave church just as evil as they were when they came into the church because they got some praise, but they don't have any Pentecostal power. I know some folk who can speak on in tongues on Sunday and cuss you out on Wednesday because they know how church is supposed to go, but they have yet to be hit by that disruptive power that turns your life upside down, that causes you to be different. The time is always right to do right. From Heritage, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. To Horizon. Listen here! Listen here! The real church is about the church that fights for justice, that fights for the people. I'll give all my praise to you. From Horizon to Higher Ground. If you have a river, you ought to cross it. If you have a dream, you ought to chase it. If you have a mountain, you ought to climb it. We come here because this God we talk about is real. Welcome to the broadcast of the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church of Atlanta, Georgia. Under the leadership of senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Raphael G. Warner. Church got started on Pentecost Day, but Pentecost Day did not start in the church. It was a divine disruption. God has a way of doing a new thing in an old place. Pouring new wine into old wineskins. God has a way of reinventing and reimagining and reinvigorating the things that we think we have nailed down and tacked to the wall of our limited imagination and our limited understanding. In to those old places and familiar spaces, God has a way of breathing a fresh wind and a fierce fire that burns in order to make things brand new. That's what Pentecost is all about. It's in the text, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound. There came a different sound. Are you with me? In a familiar place. And I dropped by this morning to suggest to you that sometimes God, sends a different sound in a familiar place. That's a Pentecostal moment when God sends a different sound in a familiar place. And can I help you this morning? Sometimes Pentecost shows up and we miss it. We miss it because we expect hear a familiar sound because we are standing in a familiar place. And every now and then God flips the script. Uh, just when we think we have it all figured out, just when we think we know what God is up to, God moves. By the time you figure out what God is doing, God is already doing something else. We, we already know 
what church is supposed to sound like. We know what this country is supposed to look like. This is our country. And if you try to change it, we're going to take it back. And if it looks like too many other folk who look different from those of us who think that this is our country, although we took it from somebody else, if too many of them show up, we'll build a wall and keep them out because they are oppressing us. That's how privilege works. Sometimes when you've been privileged so long, equality feels like oppression and you miss what God is doing in the moment. I already know what my life should look like. I have it all figured out. I put it on a spreadsheet. There came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. In other words, God showed up in the house. And when God showed up in the house, it felt like God was trying to kill us. When Pentecost comes, you will hear some sounds, my beloved, that you are not used to hearing. Because he says, I am going to pour out my spirit. In other words, I'm getting ready to saturate the place with my spirit. I, I know you've had a spirit encounter before. This is not your introduction to the spirit. The spirit has been around a long time. The prophets used to talk about the Ruach Yahweh, the spirit of the living God. But I'm getting ready not just to brush by, not just to blow by, not just to pass by. I'm getting ready to pour out my spirit, not just on some people, but on all flesh and your your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even the slaves will get in on the action. Nobody will get left out because I'm about to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I'm getting ready to turn the world upside down in order to turn the world right side up. Is there anybody here other than me who needs some Pentecostal power to blow through your house and through the house of God and through the house of the state and through the house of this world? Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come with all of your quickening power until we are made new creatures. And Lord, whatever you do, please don't take your spirit away from me because in your spirit and in your presence, there is joy. Wind filled the house, but it did not kill the house. It blessed everybody in the house. Thank God for divine disruptions in the church and in the world. And church, can I tell you something else this morning? Don't ever reduce Pentecost to praise. You can have praise and no Pentecost. Pentecost is more than a shaking of the hands and a shaking of the head. Pentecost is more than lifting up holy hands. The Bible speaks about the power of Pentecost when it said, these are they who have turned the world upside down. Church, can I tell you something? If we've got power in the church and the only folk who know about the power in the church is the folk who are in the church, then the church doesn't have any power at all. Pentecost is more than worship on a Sunday morning. If 
there's real Pentecost in the house, then the folk ought to be changed in the house. You can praise and make a whole lot of noise, and some folk come in church, and they leave church just as evil as they were when they came into the church because they got some praise, but they don't have any Pentecostal power. I know some folk who can speak on in tongues on Sunday and cuss you out on Wednesday because they know how church is supposed to go, but they have yet to be hit by that disruptive power that turns your life upside down, that causes you to be different. But when Pentecost comes, it ought not just be the church on the block, but everybody around the block ought to know that the church is here. If the church is on this block, it ought to make a difference in the lives of the people in this area because we have been with Jesus on the mountaintop. It, it filled the whole house. And you shall be my witnesses in Judea and Samaria throughout the ends of the earth. And so can I tell you something? The civil rights movement was a Pentecostal moment. Yes, it was a spiritual awakening that caught fire until it spread and changed a whole nation. It was some spiritual power that it was at the core of that movement. It didn't make sense for them to think that they could win. But they gathered in their churches before they marched on the streets. Before they marched on the streets, they gathered in their churches. And they began to sing about the power of the Lord until the power of the Lord came down. And when the power of the Lord comes down and fills the folk who are in the house, you don't mind facing water hoses because you have inside of you a fire that no water hose can put out. You don't mind facing death and dogs because you know that greater is the one who is within you than the one who is within the world. I'm telling you that the movement was a Pentecostal moment where the sun and daughters of slaves stood up and began to prophesy to a nation and tell a nation you ought to live up to who you say you are. And I'm trying to tell you that you've got more power than you think you have. Don't you remember when Fannie Lou Hamer stood up in 1968 at the Democratic National Convention? Here she was, an illiterate sharecropper from Mississippi who prior to the movement didn't even know what a constitution was but she stood up in the power of the spirit and she said I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired and she struck fear in the heart of the president of the United States and he pulled together a phony news conference. Lyndon Baines Johnson pulled together a phony news conference just to get a poor black illiterate sharecropper off of the television because when God's spirit shows up, slaves and the daughters and sons of slaves stand up and prophesy. What's wrong with your black church? You've got more power than you think you have. We need some Pentecostal power. And then... Dr. King preached his last sermon, the last night of his life, in a Pentecostal church. He said that God had allowed him to see a vision. Your young men, he was just 39 years old, shall see visions. And your old men, he wasn't even an old man, shall dream dreams. He said, God has allowed me to go to the mountaintop. And I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. It was a Pentecostal moment, but don't miss it. That church where he preached that night 
had decades earlier been born in the midst of another Pentecostal moment called the Azusa Street Revival. It happened in Los Angeles, California at the turn of the 20th century. It was a reinvigoration of the old religion with new spiritual power. It was a powerful manifestation of the spirit that went on day after day, week after week, month after month till the power and the spirit of the Lord came down and it was so powerful that for a little while it broke down racial barriers and white folk and black folk were together praising the Lord under the power of the spirit. I'm telling you there's power. A divine disruption. And so I rise this morning just to say thank God for Pentecostal moments because when Pentecost comes, old structures are made new. When Pentecost comes, old barriers are broken down. When Pentecost comes, everybody can be heard. And sometimes those of us who are in the church are so invested in old paradigms that the power of Pentecost has to emerge somewhere else outside of the church. Have you ever read that text and thought about the fact that there were a whole lot of folk in Jerusalem and they were all gathered for the day of Pentecost, but Pentecost did not show up and hit everybody. There they were, they were all in the holy city, but not everybody experienced the power of the Holy Ghost. You missed that. They were all in the holy city, but they did not all experience the power of the Holy Ghost because the power of the Holy Ghost was not showing up in the temple. It was not in the center of those who represented the religious aristocracy, but up and away on the margins, away from everybody else, away from CNN and away from C-SPAN and away from Fox News. God was doing a new thing in an old situation. So we need Pentecost in a moment like this. We need Pentecost in a week like this. The world is all messed up. We need some power. Every now and then, I, I just need a glimpse of God's glory. Am I the only one? I'm out here fighting. I'm out here struggling. I'm out here trying to do what God has called me to do. And sometimes it feels like evil is on, that good is on the scaffold and evil is on the throne. And every now and then I just need a glimpse of God's power. After a week like this, I need God to remind me that God is still alive and at work in the world. After a week like this, we had another mass killing at a school this week we barely even discussed it because this has become America's new normal. It's been a tough week. The administration opened up the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. Standing there, the President's family and a few milly mouth and all the ministers, evangelical the preachers members, members of the Knesset, members of the IDF, who are responsible the mayor, for the, the mess that we found ourselves in, the executive branch of the United States government, both there and here, to welcome the leaders, misquoting and misinterpreting the scripture, talking about peace. Meanwhile, young Palestinian sisters and brothers who are struggling for their very lives, struggling for water, and struggling for their human dignity, stood up in a nonviolent protest, saying, if we're going to die, we're going to die struggling. 
And yes, there may have been some folk who were violent, but we ought to know how that works out. We know what it's like to stand up and have a peaceful demonstration and have the media focus on a few violent uprisings. But you have to look at those Palestinian sisters and brothers who are struggling for their human dignity and they have a right to self-determination. They have a right to breathe free. We need a two-state solution where all of God's children can live together. If we can't live together in the holy city, what in the world are we talking about? We hear everybody, Arabs and Cretans, isn't that what the text says? Speaking about God's deeds of power, but we saw the government of Israel shoot down unarmed Palestinian sisters and brothers like birds of prey. And I don't care who does it, it's wrong. It's wrong to shoot down God's children like they don't matter at all. And it's no more anti-Semitic for me to say that than it is anti-white for me to say that black lives matter. Palestinian lives matter. We need a Pentecostal moment. It's been a nasty week. And we're in a nasty situation. There's so much hate and hatefulness and violence and bigotry in the world. Hate has gone viral. Nativism and ethnocentrism and bigotry in high places on both sides of the Atlantic. Before there was Trumpism over here, there was Brexit over there. Different contexts, same problem. Nativism and ethnocentrism and hate. Us against them. We need a Pentecostal moment where everybody's voice can be heard. And what I like about God is that God has a way of sending a different sound in an old familiar place. The thing I like about the Spirit is you don't know how it's going to show up. You don't know where it's going to show up. You don't know when it's going to show up. You don't know whom God is going to speak through. But what I like about God is if you hang out long enough, is there a witness in the house that God will surely show up? And when he shows up, you'll discover that you have more power than you thought you had. When he shows up, he has a way of breaking down barriers and allowing us to get a glimpse of the kingdom of God. when God shows up. And so can I confess to you, can I be honest and say to you that uh, I wasn't planning to watch that wedding. I got up early in the morning to pack so I could get back home to my family. But while I was packing, I turned on the news, as is my custom. And that wedding was on every single channel. I wasn't impressed. I remember when, when Prince William got married. I remember when his daddy married Lady Diana. So I, I had seen 
that movie before. But then I took a second look and I saw coming around the corner a sister riding in a Rolls Royce sitting next to her mama who had a ring in her nose and natural hair step out of the car and go into the church and they began to sing familiar hymns in a familiar place but then a black preacher stood up and began to talk about the love ethic of God in a hate filled world and he began to quote from Martin Luther King Jr. and then he had the nerve to quote not one but three Negro spirituals and he said let me tell you about the love of God I came from a people who were enslaved they were on the other side of the British monarchy but they knew something about the love of God and they sing there is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul there is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole oh my God and then the choir started singing. I, I had to stop packing. I, I believe the queen felt the quickening while a billion people were watching. God took the spiritual genius and the prophetic spirit of slave religion and stood it up in the cathedral of the monarchy in order to remind us that in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And so a young brother played the cello and an Ethiopian Coptic sister gave the benediction and then they walked out singing, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine everywhere I go. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'll drop by today to tell you that God's Spirit lives inside of you. And if God's Spirit lives inside of you, that means you're a member of the royal family. You may be poor, but you're royalty. You may be struggling, but you're royalty. You may be on the bottom of the bottom, but don't allow anybody to tell you that you're nobody. Praise God for the word of God. I trust that you will take the spirit and power of Pentecost with you in the coming week and in the weeks ahead. May you be surprised by divine disruptions. Until next time, keep the faith and keep looking up.